Welcome to the Small Triumph Sports Library and Archives channel. At the end of the last episode that I produced and uploaded, episode 13, I noted that I have been working up material for a long planned series of videos in which I will occasionally correct errors that have appeared in earlier videos or clarify fuzziness in earlier videos talked about the fact that I plan to refer to these as errata videos. Um, errata, of course, is a term from publishing having to do with how publishers address errors that have made their way into print. So I'm taking a little bit of creative license in using that term for my videos in which I issue uh, corrections, adjustments, clarifications. But this is the Small Triumph Sports Library and Archives channel, so uh, hopefully that kind of works. So I've been working up material. Um, there have been several things that have been kind of nagging me that I covered in, in previous uh, episodes that really require some correction or clarification. And so I have been working on several issues that I wanted to address. I did not expect to be issuing a correction on episode 13, but something happened yesterday that caused me to do a little more digging. And uh, I do have something important to say about that episode, something important to address. And I'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so here comes uh, my first errata uh, video. I'll have at least two or three coming out in the short term. And as I mentioned at the end of episode 13, I wasn't sure whether I was going to try to you know, take the several corrections that I really thought needed to be made and lump them into one video or whether I would do multiple videos. And at this point, it's probably going to be at least two and maybe three videos. But before I launch, let me say that I always go back in and correct errors in the video description. Um, I really want to be transparent, uh, so I don't really want to alter my videos and re-upload them and, and that sort of thing unless there's just really a you know, deep flaw that, that uh, requires me not wanting to put something uh, out there. And hopefully that won't happen. But there are always notes and corrections in the video description, and whenever I stumble across something relevant, I will go in and add information in there. Um, it's all part of uh, trying to keep things as accurate as possible and trying to provide as much context as I can for the different things that I cover. Also, I'm not going to make a correction video for every little thing that comes up. So, you know, if I'm in a video and I say nut when I mean bolt, there, I'm not going to make a video correcting that. I'll clean that up in the video description and, uh, you know, that should be uh, fine. Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't look at the video description, but I actually do try to make my video descriptions useful. Not only do I provide notes and corrections, but I also try to provide work cited uh, information for all secondary sources in particular. I don't always do it for primary sources um, because it doesn't, it just seems unnecessary uh, in most cases, but um, secondary sources in particular, I am very careful to document. Anyway, here's what happened to me yesterday. So I've been very busy lately, but I had a little bit of time and I made it out to the monthly um, brunch slash lunch meeting um, that my British Car Club has. And a fellow club member drove his 1973 GT6, Mark III, of course, to the meeting. And as I was walking around the car, I stopped and looked at the triplex manufacturer's mark on the heated rear window of the car, confident that I could decipher it based on um, you know the research that I'd done for my previous uh, video, episode 13. And I looked at it and I could not decipher it at all. And that led me to do some additional research and now here I am doing some cleanup work, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go back and then we'll move 
forward with corrections. So in episode 13, I attempted to decipher the date code on the triplex manufacturer's mark on the glass of my 1969 Triumph GT6 Plus. And based on the source that I had seen, triplex dated the glass based on the following. First of all, in order to indicate the quarter of the year in which the glass was manufactured, Triplex used the first two and last two letters of the Triplex name at the top of the logo. So a dot over the T at the beginning would be first quarter of the year, a dot over the R would be the second quarter of the year, and then moving to the end of the Triplex name, a dot over the E would be third quarter and a dot over the X would be the fourth quarter. Then the year of manufacture was indicated by a dot under the line at the bottom of the logo, in this case, Hotline Sundem. So no dot, of course, would be zero. And then if there was a dot, you would count the number of letters um, moving from the beginning of the line in order to determine the number representing the last digit in the year. So in the case of my glass, the line is Hotline Sundem. So we count starting with the H and go to the S where there's a dot underneath it. And that means that S represents eight. So the glass was manufactured in 1968. In episode 13, I stated that the dot over the T meant that my glass was manufactured in the first quarter of the year. So I had stated that I thought the glass was manufactured in the first quarter of 1968. My car was built in early August 1968. So that made sense. Seemed to work. However, <laughs> when I was at my car club lunch meeting yesterday, I looked at this logo on the glass of 1973 GT6, and I looked at the triplex name at the top, and lo and behold, there is one dot over the R and two dots over the X, and I had no idea how to read that. Now, the bottom line, we have a toughened and there's a dot under the O in toughened, which of course is the second letter. So um, that was a two, and so obviously 1972, and that made sense for a 1973 car. So that part was not baffling, but I had no idea how to read the triplex and you know what quarter of the year that was supposed to be. That's when I realized I needed to do some more digging because I, of course, immediately thought back to how it was a little bit confusing that my own logo had two dots over the T. And in my video in episode 13, I speculated that maybe at some point Triple X had started to indicate the specific month, but I had not seen any information about that in any of the sources I had looked at to that point. But when I saw this, on a 1973 GT6, I realized that I needed to be doing more research uh, so that I could figure out what was going on. And lo and behold, I found a source that indicated that in January 1969, Triplex actually started using various single and double dots over letters in the Triplex name in order to indicate the specific month of manufacture. Now, the source said that Triplex began doing this in January 1969, but there's a comment on the source itself. And then, of course, we have other evidence, including uh, my own glass that was manufactured in 1968. This suggests that Triplex started doing this in 1968. If that's the case, and it seems to be the case, then Triplex was indicating the actual month of manufacture for the entire run of GT6 heated rear glass that was manufactured. And so uh, that's important to emphasize. Um, so how do we read this? Well, let's go back first and foremost to my glass so I can correct that. 
we have two dots over the T. If Triplex was using this new system that indicated month of manufacture, then my glass uh, was manufactured two dots over the T. You can see based on that chart in May of 1968, which makes perfect sense. Actually, probably makes a little bit more sense than the first quarter of 1968, which was, uh, of course, what I originally stated uh, based on assuming that the markings should be read based on the oil old style of triplex indicating the quarter of manufacture. So um, my glass was manufactured in May of 1968. As I indicated in my video, uh, my car is in early August 1968 build, so that makes perfect sense. Probably makes more sense that it was manufactured in May than in the first quarter, even though you know, we're only talking about a couple of months difference in that case. Now how to read this uh, 1973 GT6 um, glass. Um, dot over R, two dots over X, we go to our chart um, dot over the R and two dots over the X you can see down toward the bottom there is October. So that means that this glass is in October uh, 1972. It was manufactured in October of 1972. Makes perfect sense for a 1973 car. I don't know the exact um, month and, and year of manufacture of this car. I just know that it's a 1973 model year car. It's a late non-rotoflex car. Certainly October of 1972 makes perfect sense uh, for the original glass uh, for that car. But here's the especially important point. As I said earlier, I think Triplex was using this month specific date coding throughout the run of heated rear glass for the GT6. And if you look at the beginning, for example, so if you read that Triplex at the top with the single dot over T, using the old quarterly method, then you're going to get first quarter of the year. And that will be accurate, but with the new system, it specifically means January. But note the second on the list, triplex with the dot over the R, that means February. Well, if you read that using the old method, um, then you're going to think second quarter of the year, and that, of course, is not accurate. Uh, February obviously does not fall in the second quarter of the year. So the important point that I want to make with this um, errata video is that if you have a GT6 with a heated rear uh, window, you need to use this chart um, when you're reading the, the date code on the um, glass. So hopefully you can see why I, I wanted to get that out, make sure I had uh, accurate information out there. And again, my goal is to be uh, transparent about my corrections. I want to call attention to the fact that I'm correcting things um, when I do. I don't like to go in and surreptitiously change things and act like I didn't screw anything up. I have uh, other things in the works. The um, next video I think that I will end up posting barring something unforeseen, is actually going to be another errata video. This one dealing with the fuse box. I talked about the Spitfire and GT6 fuse box back in episode 8. And while I stand by the basic things that I covered in that video, I really talked about the fuse box itself in an inexcusably uh, fuzzy way, and I want to do some uh, cleanup work with that. That one's really been nagging me for a while. Um, and I have a couple of little other issues I want to address. I may combine that into a single video. I'm not completely sure yet, but I do expect uh, my next video to be an errata video and the fuse box issue to be the main focus in that video. I also have some regular episodes uh, that I'm collecting information for as well. So as usual, a number of things going on in the background. I hope to be back before too long. Thanks for watching. Take care.